What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network here for the series on the Understanding Bitcoin Conference. We're here in Malta. It's been a great event so far. And we are, of course, going to uh, produce here for you a good interviews with all the peers available here at that conference. Uh, first and foremost, I'm joined today by Adam Fisk or Nopara73. What's up? Uh, thanks for having me, Max. And uh, finally, me too. <laughs> yes, meet space verification. Uh, I can now confirm that Adam is not a dog. Uh, he actually is a human being. Uh, the beard is long. Uh, it's glorious. Uh, so that's dope. <laughs> what do you think of the event so far? I think it's nice. It's, it's, oh, it has so many ICOs. Like everyone is selling something. I, I want to buy, buy them all. Yes, yes. All the, all the ICOs are themed in the Middle Ages. Uh, so uh, we actually have scribes uh, doing extra pictures uh, for every ICO. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful. Except the Wasabi ICO, because the Wasabi ICO is not themed in the Middle Ages. It's unique. <laughs> it is. Uh, and uh, of course, well, if, if, uh, if there would be a good time frame for Wasabi, or at least a region, what would it be? Would it be like the medieval times with knights, or would it be more uh, like the, the samurais? What would it be? Well, probably the samurais, because they are cooler. <laughs> well, really, though, would a samurai stand a chance against a knight? Yes. You cut them half. <laughs> right through the armor, no questions asked. <laughs> so, Adam, of course, uh, we all know uh, you work on the awesome Wasabi wallet, uh, and there have been a lot of uh, cool new things coming. Uh, so, since the last um, one or two versions, uh, what have you been tinkering on? What is, what is actually now live on, on mainnet? So, I, I've been just on the airplane, and on the airplane I was coding, and it was quite good because there is no distractions, and I, I implemented a very, very important feature which is user feedback so now you can see more user feedback on the status bar uh, we are working on more user feedback as those notifications those are coming up on the on the things that uh, there's definitely something that we are missing uh, less softwareish but more uh, featureish things are uh, we would like to start working on a hardware wallet, but it's not, we don't have uh, the resources yet, but it's coming. Um, hardware wallet integration. So the other thing is what we just finished is the Tor integration to peer-to-peer -peer layer. All right. Uh, so we had Tor integration between the server, the Wasabi backend, and the clients. But now we have Tor integration between all the peers that uh, the user is connecting to, which is not that important, but it's uh, nice to have. And uh, thanks for Nicola Doria for uh, implementing it and giving us a lot more work to properly implement it later. <laughs> now he did a great job. Well, a slightly above average job, a bit mediocre, uh, but I guess. <laughs> so, okay, you, you named that three uh, cool reasons, and I think we can uh, just cover a bit all of them. Uh, so first, uh, it's, it's a more intuitive user interface where you, where you show exactly what is happening, right? So, and here always the question is, like, I'm a power user, right? I, and you as well. We really understand Bitcoin quite deeply and also coin joins and all the stuff happening in a wallet. And so for me personally, I always appreciate when there's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of nuances, a lot of details that I can tinker with. But of course, the average user or maybe a newbie user might be completely uh, overwhelmed by all these details and, and not really know exactly uh, how you can handle this. So where are the trade-offs here and, and where did you make that design decision? So unfortunately, the users misunderstood the wallet, the power users, because they can see that, oh, they have coin selection and, and so many advanced stuff, but we, we don't want to put any advanced stuff. We only complicate the UI if it's necessary for privacy, right? If it's not necessary for privacy, then we don't complicate the UI. Uh, and I think this is why uh, many people think it's it's intuitive to use. Uh, so I would I I like to add features in a way that it's hidden. For example, in the next version, if you click on the balance, then it's going to 
have asterisks or, or no, the sharps uh, on every sensitive information. So right, it's it's not a not an important feature, but it's but some users were requesting, some power users were requesting, so we added this. Uh, you can actually set it in the settings too, uh, but it's it's really nice right now because now you can post screenshots and make videos of the wallet without reveling your, without doxing yourself, right? So it's nice. Well, yeah, right. So, so I did, I did the noob thing and I did all the videos here for the World Crypto Network on Testnet, which of course is fake Bitcoin and not too interesting, but I did not want to break my privacy, right? And I did not want to reveal my coins, even if I would coin join them afterwards, right? But someone like 402 Payments, who has also done a great series on the Wasabi wallet, he actually did it on mainnet, right? With real coins. Uh, but now, of course, the entire world knows which UTXO he has. And of course, well, that's also kind of a test if Wasabi is actually uh, going to preserve his privacy. Uh, but definitely having this feature is great and also for customer support uh, because now users can easily send screenshots of uh, or if they have any issues or questions. Uh, and I see that also in the Telegram chat of the Wasabi wallet uh, that a lot of users did post screenshots uh, with then the tr uh, transaction ID or the exact amounts. And that's, of course, horrible for privacy because it links your coins directly to your telecom account. Account, a telegram account so uh, this is definitely a nice feature and nice to have so just a quick thing that posting screenshots of your wallet is well it's terrible but it's better than you would uh, write uh, as a text because most uh, most spy companies are not looking at pictures they stop at texts right they are looking at bitcoin addresses you're posting on twitter but if you post a screenshot uh, of your Bitcoin address that's uh, that's still bad but at least the the mass surveillance tools are it's harder for them to pick it up and and that's uh, that's definitely important there mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh, you have to take care of your privacy and always be cautious about that um, so then you also said hardware wallets, right? That is, of course, a huge feature uh, because, well, hardware wallets means that the keys are on a separate device uh, and that is usually not connected uh, to any device connected to the Internet. Um, and then though the main issue, of course, with Wasabi is that if you do a coin join, um, you you propose this transaction to the coordinator uh, and then he does the entire setup and that takes some time. And then the last step, of course, is when the coordinator sends the proposed complete coin join transaction to all the clients. And then they have, I think, a two minute time window uh, of signing that transaction. But of course, for that, they have to have the keys hot on, on the computer because otherwise they cannot sign. it. And so if we have a hardware wallet where you have to have like a physical press on that button, uh, then the user would have to wait the 30, 40, 50 minutes until the coin join transaction is proposed so that he can sign it. Um, so that's, of course, a bit difficult to do. So where do you think are opportunities of integrating hardware wallets uh, to something that requires such a hot wallet as CoinJoins? So f first of all, hardware wallet is a privacy risk. And this is the only systemic privacy risk for Wasabi wallet because what people do is that they take their hardware wallet, they send it to Wasabi, they start to mix and then they join together all their inputs and put it back to the same hardware wallet, which of course that hardware wallet uh, is not built for privacy. So if you want to use hardware wallet in a private way, then you have to connect your hardware wallet to Electrum and you have to use that Electrum with Chris Belcher's Electrum personal server, which connects it to Bitcoin Core, which you should use uh, Tor for transaction broadcasting. So you should uh, connect Tor together with Bitcoin Core uh, in case you are afraid your ISP is spying on you. So it's just, you know, uh, hardware wallet, Electrum, Electrum personal server, Bitcoin Core and Tor. So that's the private way to use it. Now, uh, we can in integrate existing hardware wallets right now, uh, but we have to disable the coin join tab. That's one option that's coming. I'm not, I'm not, I don't really want to do that, but uh, it, it should be done eventually. Uh, 
or hardware wallets can add functionalities that, for example, the user could tell the hardware wallet that, hey, sign every transaction the, until $10 goes out of your wallet, which means the coin joins are coming uh, for signing to the hardware wallet, and with the coin joins, you always got back the money to your own wallet. So that's why it's nice, and and that's that's what can be done. That's how you do coin joins with hardware wallet in this, in a secure way. Yes, and right because you send the money back to yourself. It might even be such a rule to say that any coin join that sends money back to yourself, regardless of the value, uh, that then you can sign automatically. Uh, no. Because if you're an attacker, you get the hardware wallet and you just start to to do the, the, the coin join like transactions, you can make the wallet empty in, in a day or two, right? You can empty it out. So the user has to say that uh, like the, there must be some kind of limit, either time or amount or, or, or something. Just, just, just have a limit that the user agrees to. Mm, yes. Okay. Uh, and you also mentioned here that you might be considering doing your own hardware. Of course, you need more funds for that. So, Piers, it's up to you. If you want to have an awesome privacy hardware wallet, then keep on coin joining uh, because that how that is how Nopara actually gets his precious sets. Uh, so, why do you think, or what other privacy first um, focuses can such a hardware wallet have? Uh, um, so. We were not considered, of course, it, it came to our mind, minds to do our own hardware wallets, but we looked at it and ah, it's too hard. <laughs> uh, and there, there, were, there is another hardware wallet company who's just coming up and don't have a release yet. And uh, we were, and they wanted to do, they want to do a script table hardware wallet, which would be the perfect thing for CoinJoin. So we wanted to collaborate with them or team up with them or something that, oh, maybe we can join our companies or something. You don't have a product. We have a product, uh, but uh, they didn't want it to join. So anyway, if they came out, with, when they came out with that wallet, that probably, that might be the only hardware wallet that does. It's a uh, Stefan. Smirgo. Sneergov, yeah, um, that might be the only one. Uh, actually, today I talked to the Trezor guys and they were talking about they want to do this too. They don't want uh, these very simple things that I just explained to you uh, about, okay, $10. They, they want a very extensive business logic, so a, a hardware wallet scriptability, which is a uh, which takes longer to build, right? Because it's it's, but it's a it's a larger plan, so it's 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 definitely great. So that would be that would be nice. Awesome. So yeah, if you want to both preserve your privacy and the risk of getting your private keys stolen, definitely stay up to tune, uh, up to date, and tuned uh, to what these staffs are working on. Lots of cool things coming. And then you also mentioned the, the great Tor integration now. So um, Nicolas Dorier uh, finally implemented Tor on the N Bitcoin or in the N Bitcoin library, uh, and now you're using this. So and you, you also published a guide on or a short article on the differences of the of the different Wasabi versions uh, and Bitcoin Core uh, and on the, with different versions and Tor integrations as well, and how they compare in the privacy aspect on a network level. Uh, so now, could you please explain a bit more on where exactly now the trade-offs are and how good the network level privacy is for Wasabi in the current version? It doesn't matter. Uh, I compared the Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Core with Tor, the current released Wasabi, the next Wasabi release, uh, and Wasabi connected to Bitcoin Core. That's five wallet, that's what I compared. Uh, and I came up with very, very unreal adversaries. Like if a company fires up thousands of full nodes over Tor and they can also break Tor, <laughs> 
then they can do this and this. And this. So I came up with this. There were only two adversaries that are plausible. Uh, one is that uh, companies are setting up super nodes. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand how that works, but the Dandelion paper wrote it, so it must be true. Uh, so if companies setting up super nodes, then they can figure out where the transaction comes from, from which IP originates from, and only Bitcoin Core uh, without Tor it fails against this kind of attack uh, between all the all the wallets I compared. Okay, the next one uh, was the ISP, your ISP. So the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer protocol by default is unencrypted. So <clears throat> Bitcoin Core without Tor fails against this in a way that uh, you send the transaction and ISP can see, hey, you sent the transaction and this is the transaction you sent. Uh, you would think because Bitcoin Core propagates other transactions too that Oh, they cannot figure out. Yes, they can because the only transaction that doesn't uh, came in to the wallet only goes out. That must be the, the one that originates from your node. Okay, so also Wasabi's current version fails uh, against ISPs in a way that it downloads blocks from peers. Of course, uh, not over Tor and unencrypted. Uh, so if, if an ISP is monitoring the traffic, network traffic, for a very long period of time, then, um, <clears throat> then he can see which blocks were the wallet interested in. There are some false positives, but so you see it's getting, <laughs> getting, <laughs> getting very unreal, but okay. But the, Theoretically, they could pick the first block and look at the transactions that goes to the next block and the next block. Oh, this must be your, in your wallet. So it's, a, it's definitely possible. Now, if you are using, so the other release thing is Bitcoin Core plus Wasabi. So there you download from Bitcoin Core. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not going to, yeah, it doesn't work anymore with this. Um, yeah, so the, these these two adversaries, the ISP and the super nodes, are kind of plausible, right? Uh, nothing uh, really makes sense. So Bitcoin plus Tor, just you don't really have any kind of attack. You have attack, uh, but not privacy attack. There was a paper calling Bitcoin Core might not be a good idea over. Bitcoin might not be a good idea over Tor. Uh, let's not go into this. Uh, there were some attacks there described, but these were not privacy attacks, but uh, well, they can trick you in this and this and this way. But only when the stars align that uh, he, uh, and uh, yeah, some yeah. So so that's that's it. <laughs> yeah. So so always be careful uh, with coin joining or with using Bitcoin at a full moon, uh, because then uh, the likelihood of your ISP spying on you is much higher. <laughs> so okay, Tor is great, but um, we also have uh, VPNs, right? Virtual private networks. Um, is that also helpful? And and might that help against the ISP level attack? Yes, that's definitely helpful because. Your ISP does not promise you that he's not going to spy on you. Your VPN company promises you that he's not going to spy on you, which a promise means a promise is better than a no promise, right? So it's 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 a confidential privacy model, but yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> okay, okay. So and um, but but if you would use a Tor, or so you encrypt everything with Tor. Uh, and then you still use a VPN. Does then the VPN know the data or, or is the data already encrypted with Tor before it reaches the VPN? Oh, I mean, specifically about Wasabi, there is no reason to use VPN 
because it's actually end-to-end -end encrypted. So with the backend, we communicate with an onion, uh, onion endpoint of our backend. So that's end-to-end -end encrypted communication. Uh, with the nodes, we are only connecting to onion nodes actually with, with the new Wasabi. Yeah. So, so there is no reason to VPN using VPN there either. Uh, now, uh, why you would use VPN? And this would actually be a good idea for Wasabi to, to launch a VPN company because in <laughs> we noticed that in China, uh, yeah, I think only Chinese people were were complaining. I mean, it kind of worked for them, but sometimes it didn't. So you might you probably want to use a VPN in China because your Tor traffic might be blocked most of the times, or sometimes uh, it's it, it's it's a good question. Uh, in North Korea, you probably want to use a VPN too. So North Koreans who are listening to YouTube. They are probably already using VPNs or internet. Yeah, uh, yeah, great points. And if all that fails, well, I guess then we have to communicate with carrier pigeons uh, and, and just handwrite the transactions. Uh, and I, I guess that will be perfect. Uh, that will be coming in version 2.0 uh, of the Wasabi wallet. <laughs> um, of course, also one thing that uh, was introduced in one of the recent upgrades uh, was a very basic version of the uh, Wasabi daemon uh, that is headless without the graphical user interface. Uh, so could you talk a bit about what it is currently doing and what it might be doing in the future? Okay, so this is released already, but on Debian, uh, with the Deb package, it doesn't work. But it's already fixed, so the next the next release is going to work. Okay, so what does it do? You write in wasabi mix wallet and wallet name, and it's going to mix until it finishes mixing. That's that's it. Um, so basically, you specify this uh, wallet and any coins that are in there will be automatically registered for the coin join until the desired anonymity set is reached. And I think by default that is 50, uh, but you can change that in the config file. Uh, so you could change, for example, the desired anonymity set to be 128 or something else. And then it would do three, maybe four coin joins automatically uh, and then just sit there, right? Yes, so the ideal anonymity set is over 9,000. It has to be. <laughs> so, and, but this is a basic function. So do, do you think it can be improved a bit or, or what else can be uh, or will become? Well, because it's, it can be only used for mixing, right? It's very simple. Uh, but of course, we can, we can overcomplicate it. We can do a... We can be at the CLI wallet, uh, a command line wallet <laughs> out of it. It just, uh, we might do something like, like that or start working on something like that because Francis uh, is using Wasabi in his, in, his, in his exchange in Toronto. Uh, Bull Bitcoin. Yep. Yeah. Bull Bitcoin. Um, Francis and a couple other entrepreneurs uh, decided that they do want to treasure the privacy of their users, and thus they state that they will uh, coin join all the user funds in order to preserve uh, their clients' privacy, which is awesome. So if you are uh, using or if you have a business uh, touching customer money, uh, then you should really take care of that because there are, of course, also uh, legal risks of of not taking care of user privacy. Um, but okay. Okay. So. Uh, so what they are doing right now is someone does this all day to, to go to Wasabi and Mix and then Bitcoin Core and stuff and we can make this, uh, we, can, we can make the guy's job simpler if we just add uh, like a receive to, the, to our, our CLI or something like that, to, the, to a, a receive function, for example, things like that. So, so it might end up being larger than 
I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> well, and anything is going to be a bit more tricky uh, than you anticipated. Um, and I think one, one cool thing that might be coming out of this daemon is that there are full nodes in a uh, always-on dedicated device, right? That might be the Noddle, uh, that might be the Raspberry Blitz. Uh, and these are just little computers that have a Bitcoin Core uh, node running. And they are running 24-7. And with Wasabi, when you do coin joins, your wallet has to be online because it has to be prepared for the uh, transaction proposed for signing. Uh, so do you think that we will uh, have a, uh, this headless daemon running on such a dedicated device so that you can easily uh, coin join 24-7? Uh, I think that's a great idea. We could just sell boxes and those boxes will coin join for you. So it's a good business idea and it makes sense for the user too. It's possible. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, the Noddle peers are uh, downstairs at the conference. Uh, so you should absolutely hook up. <laughs> okay. So uh, Noparth, thanks for coming on. It was a great conversation. Um, do you have anything else uh, in closing that you want to let the peers know? Uh, no, just... It's really, it was really nice to meet you today. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. Oh, well, thank you. And I can give that compliment back. It's always awesome to, to talk to others like in cyberspace for, for months, for years almost, and uh, then finally meeting them. And, and it's, it's like meeting a already known friend, uh, but you've never met them before uh, like in meet space. So uh, yeah, absolutely. These conferences are always a great uh, opportunity to meeting uh, these peers and having great conversations. Uh, so you're missing out by, by not being here, uh, but that's why the World Crypto Network is here for you uh, to provide you with all the content that you might have otherwise missed. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.